Okay, my fellow Earthlings, welcome to this time lapse. In this time lapse, I'm painting this small portrait of a girl called with a name Maria. As usual, I start out on a canvas I have uh, covered with uh, two layers of gesso and a li layer of uh, turp and some raw umber from uh, not from Old Holland actually, it's from uh, from. Um, Winston Newton, because it's more ha more bluish color. The old Holland one is redder, and I actually like the. There's one or a few colors I like from Winston Newton, uh, because it is um, it is uh, kind of more neutral. You see, I start with a uh, with uh, with uh, light areas, and I just keep building. Uh, as you can see in the beginning, I'm actually using the darkened canvas as a basically as a shadow. Uh, or dark so I when I add the the light you can actually see that the, the light or the white paint kind of becomes quite bright compared to the background I use that is covered with a umbar. and then I fill in as you can see also in the background there and and all over the place and yeah so here I just build it's kind of crude in the beginning. I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to sketching. I used to use uh, way more time on the sketch, but I don't see uh, the point in being that perfect. I just try to get most things approximately right, so that I need to do many, many overpaints to get it perfect. I could actually spend more time with uh, Gazelle Grisel or whatever it's called. I was actually it was a guy here on YouTube. I actually <laughs> commented on how I said Grisel, Gisel or whatever. Uh, yeah, sounds like a animal on the steppes of Africa. But anyway, uh, Gisel is actually uh, underpaint, uh, which is quite neutral, where you actually do the whole thing uh, without the color, and then you add a color on top of it after after the fact. I don't care doing that. I just like to go right in with all the colors and all the all the textures and uh, the thick one, thick layers and the thin layers and uh, and just basically mold it like it was a piece of clay. Uh, I say that over and over again in my videos. For me, uh, uh, painting is basically like building a relief or building a sculpture. That is how I think when I paint. Um, sometimes I get into trouble because I hurry up too much and uh, add too much color. One time I actually had to gone to so far and painted for so long that I just took a knife and I just scraped down all the textures that not all, but I scraped down all the excess color. And um, what happened was actually that I got this very beautiful almost knitted texture uh, that was underneath all the lumps and stuff and then I just started adding more uh, different uh, layers on top of that again with the glazes and all these things that I do in this one I, I tried to keep it open uh, I kind of know her face very well so it's it's uh, it's um, almost like when you know a face very well, it is almost like you, when you paint, uh, it's almost like you're painting your own face in a way. Uh, we also have some of the same features. Uh, so um, uh, that also makes it a little bit easier because I recognize some of my own features in, in her face. Um, kind of small nose you know these lips and stuff uh, and yeah so uh, what what can i say here you can see i just add in more now i do, do some yellowish and i paint over that again and uh more white and uh what can i say <laughs> it is it is um kind of a grueling process i go back and forth and back and forth and all in all the whole painting become comes into being from all my mistakes and if you can actually accept that and not stress uh, by getting everything perfect from the start i think it will make you relax more 
and see it more as a process than a challenge to make it right right away and that is one of the things that i try to teach people when i when i uh, teach someone to paint this kind of uh, let loose be a little bit casual with it but try to get the main things right uh there was a woman a while ago which was quite good and she actually when she listened to me she she was only doing drawing actually but she did did quite well uh but the moment she started to try to be an artist it it, it all fell apart uh, she didn't concentrate, she didn't uh, focus right, and uh, and uh, she got stuck in a way, and I guess she probably just gave up. And I can be quite a cruel teacher, actually. It is like, remember, I remember my, my sculpture teacher in art school, and I had made this, this um, et etzning, etching, or what I call it. And I was so pleased when it was kind of it was actually going to to resemble me a self portrait with an egg, and it was a time where I was a little bit kind of spiritual or quasi religious, and you know the egg is a symbol of the soul, and and, and there was a self portrait and and stuff, and I was pleased with this, and of course it wasn't good, uh, but I didn't see that and. Uh, that was one of the most funny moments in our school, actually. So other people would probably just fall apart if a teacher sold that. But I said, what do you think? Do you see it's me or whatever, something? And I said, well, and he just looked at me with his dark brown eyes. And he said, it looks like a hen, an egg and a hen, <laughs> like a hörna in Norway. And, and I just started to laugh because it was so true and it was the way he just said it, it was just brilliant you know a, and yes i said it was uh, one of the moments i really appreciated because this guy was actually brilliant he, sadly he died a few years ago of cancer only 60 years old and i didn't know because it was one of christoph Nashilov, narsilovsky or something he uh, used to work in the art school in stavanger where I got, went and, and I didn't know. I actually met one of the fellow students and she told me that he died. I was just so sad because he was one of the teachers that actually had a know-how, but also this strange, deep Polish, almost, uh, and and he also gave me a book actually called, um, uh, in Norway, The Anger Oxo Day, or it's, it's kind of, it also is about you or whatever you should translate it into English. It is a book about uh, the Holocaust. And uh, he gave that to me because he thought I was so naive and stuff and, and happy or lucky and stuff. And he gave me this book. And I found it a while ago. And the funny thing is in that book, uh, the Norwegian um, Holocaust survivor Samuel Steinman is a part of that book actually and I didn't know that and I painted him in 2014 so it was kind of an eerie thing to read that book again and thinking about my art teacher who died and uh, and Samuel Steinman who also died a year after I painted him anyway um, yeah so but this teacher taught me a lot of stuff and and, uh, and uh, I really appreciate appreciated that. As you can see now, I have gone much deeper into, into the detail here, but it's also very roughly painted. And I think in this small, it is only 17.17 .17 centimeters, so it's very small. And uh, yeah, this is also a portrait of uh, one of the few girls, you know, which I actually, yeah, kind of, have affection for and uh, it makes you a little bit eerie too for me actually to paint her but that's life and we should just pick ourselves up and uh, keep walking and keep learning and keep painting and keep building and everything so now you will see some close-ups of the there is a yeah it's a horrible thing to actually uh, <laughs> put this signature on I always 
hate it because it's big it becomes too big and stuff but anyway here you can see some uh, some of the textures it's quite nice now if you want to support my channel go to my uh, patreon and sign up for a dollar five and if you do i will teach you how to paint from there and if not i hope to see you in the next video thumbs up give a comment and see you in my next video I hope.